What's up, nerds? Welcome back. Today, I'm not going to be talking about a comic book in general, but what I will be talking about is comic book related. So let's all sit back, get ready to just have some fun, because we're going to be looking today at the 40 worst Rob Liefeld drawings. Now, yes, you heard me correctly when I said we're going to be looking at Rob Liefeld drawings. Now, what I, I want to preface this before I actually get into the list and tell you that this particular list we're going to be looking at comes from just like an article or I guess a blog post, whatever it might be, from years ago. As of the time that I am putting this video up, it's been almost 10 years exactly since it was put up on this particular website. But I think that the it was actually put out like around 2007 originally. And then it was re-uploaded in like 2012, which was probably a year before I actually found it when I was a college student. And I just remember being high and reading this and literally laughing until I thought I was going to throw up. And I went back to it, you know, a few years ago to see like, was it really that funny or was it just because I was stoned? And I read it again sober and it would still made me laugh. I was reading it just now again, and it was still making me laugh. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and look through it, even though a lot of this is just artwork that has been around, you know, for a long time. Like, this is old stuff. Rob Liefeld has definitely done newer stuff that could also probably be made fun of in just the same way. Trust me, I've read a lot of his stuff. But um, I think my favorite part is that there are this. there's this list of the 40 worst, and there's another list that'll come after. So I may possibly break up this particular video into pieces and then also do the same thing with that. Or I might just do this all in one go. I don't really know. We'll see. We'll see how it works out as I actually start reading into it. But yeah, but also before I start, I just want to say like, I don't hate Rob Liefeld. I do hate his artwork. I cannot stand his artwork at all. It's fine if you like it. Totally fine. I, I may have you know, questions about your taste, but I don't hate anybody who likes his work. I don't hate the man himself. He's obviously a very successful comic book artist. I just don't think that he, uh, <laughs> that maybe he deserves all of that success, but hey, it's not for me to judge. He made his money and um, he's known for what he's known for. So good for him. But that definitely is not going to stop me from sitting here and making fun of the shit that he has turned in as a uh, as a comic book professional. So let's just go ahead and jump right into the list and talk about what it is we have to look at here. So yeah, like I said, this is what we have, the 40 worst Rob Liefeld drawings. This is from the progressive Boink written by a, a Bill Hanstock. And like I said, April 21st, 2012, uh, that's when this was put up on this particular website, but I think it says down here, yeah, this feature was originally published on November 14th, 2007. So it's it's very old. It is a very old thing, but I still feel like a lot of this is, uh, <laughs> it's all very uh, relevant now. Or maybe the, the 2007 was this part. I don't really, I'm not really sure this part where they're talking about. It. But anyway, it says, holy lord, Rob Liefeld is bad at drawing. I mean, holy shit, I'll stop. Just read this. It's awesome. Also, you can find the sequel, 40 more of the worst Rob Liefeld drawings right here. So yeah, like I said, I will be doing a video about that one as well. So yeah, they have this thing where he was talking about how he owns Conan's sword from the uh, the Arnold Schwarzenegger Conan movie. And he's saying, I have Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, sword from the first Conan the Barbarian. After the premiere of True Lies, there was an auction and I bought that. On the blade, he signed Arnold Schwarzenegger. I have it framed, and I have a big picture of him as Conan with that exact sword in a giant display in my theater room. Now we look at it and go, hey, it's the governor's sword. And once he fixes all of the rules, it will be the president's sword. So it just says, this is Rob Liefeld. If that doesn't tell you everything you need to know about Rob Liefeld, well, I'm sorry for this in advance. Comic books exploded when I was about 10 years old. They'd always been popular, and we'd always collected and enjoyed them. But a surge of popularity brought up collectors and special editions, and all the shit we've learned to deal with from breakfast cereals and television punditry. Kids were replaced by old men with backing boards, and eventually the kids and the old men became one. And 9 out of 10 kids you met collected comics for the money they'd never see, and gave you the most turd-burgling stink eye if you took the literally, figuratively, and creatively worthless spirits of vengeance out of its polybag. 
It was a grand and miserable time for all involved. And as a result, now Spider-Man wears flying armor and the good writers we lost, guys like Alan Moore, are busy writing graphic novels about how Snow White loves fucking the Seven Dwarves and a metaphorical future Paris or whatever. You don't need to know about this. Comics were once for kids, and now they're for the adults who love them as kids but suddenly became adults with no upward motivation. Talented people did and still work on comics, and as immature and goofy as any hobby can be, they should be respected and admired for their work. We don't hate comics. I'm a little more bitter about the loss of innocence than Bill, but we both don't appreciate Garth Ennis having Superman demand blowjobs in a comic and expecting people to call him a genius. People do. People suck. And I thought that's very prescient because, like I said, this was written years ago, and yet this still kind of ties into what's going on right now because The Boys is a very well loved series on amazon prime and all that shit so i mean all this ties directly into exactly that and so it says and then there's rob liefeld you know how people draw comics rob doesn't do that he had his own levi's commercial directed by spike lee in the 90s he had best-selling comic books he was a revolutionary and helped co-found image comics when all the hot artists ditched their classic gigs like spider-man the x-men and uh guardians of the galaxy for creator-owned projects but he doesn't draw comics. Oh, God, no. Just, uh, let me show you. So, we jump right into it. It started with number 40. It says, the most important thing you need to know before reading about all the terrible things Rob Liefeld has drawn is that he has never seen or talked to a woman in his life and has no idea what they look like or how their bodies operate. If you asked Rob Liefeld to draw a diagram of the uterus, he'd put on a pair of gauntlets and punch the shit out of your chalkboard. This is how the man operates. And though I know it sounds like a lot, you have to believe me. I don't want you looking at the stuff he's drawing and thinking he's a conscious adult male with a creative job who can and has influenced the minds of young artists. The man is a pair of blue jeans with a face. He has on a backwards cap, and when he turns it around, it's still backwards. Got it? Okay. The number 40 spot is a catch-all for any time Rob Liefeld has ever drawn a woman. We get more specific from here, but if we didn't lump these together, the entire list would be broken spines and colossal hooters. I genuinely feel these are mistakes, so just go ahead and drink in this image. Pay particular attention to the, the midriff here, and we will get right into it. This is what a woman looks like to Rob Liefeld. I can't even kid about this. It's fucking ridiculous. Fucking ridiculous. She's wearing a string of pouches where her stomach should be, should, but could not possibly be, and both her thighs and forearms are larger than her abdomen. She has a big ol' ass and torpedo tits, and I genuinely think that when Rob finished drawing her, he sat back, frowned, looked over at his friend and said, yikes, sorry guy, and then he started drawing teenagers for DC Comics, and that's what we have here. This is supposed to be Cassie Sansmark wonder girl and dear god before i even read the description like how is does it look like he drew all of the top part first and then just went in and remembered oh yeah she's supposed to have the bottom of her body and drew it in a completely different direction no kidding what we're exploring isn't an artist we don't like we argue about that bill will like one guy and i'll like another but generally we don't wish ill on the guys nor do we hope for their gainful unemployment we're exploring something so abstruse and offensive that our Mortal Kombat-ridden childhood comes back to uppercut off our level heads three times and rip out our spine. In that sentence, spine is meant to represent, holy shit, what is wrong with fucking Rob Liefeld? So now we go on to this drawing of Cable who's sitting there saying, but then again, who needs a crystal ball to predict the obvious? Well, actually, I suppose I guess it's supposed to be Strife, which is, you know, Cable's like twin or whatever. Anyway. It says, who indeed? This is a good introduction to how Rob Liefeld, and indeed just about any comics artist in the early 90s, approached their medium. Make it as dynamic and gritty as possible. In this case, dynamic involves a whole shitload of lines on the face, some foreboding shadows obscuring the general middle of the face area, and a background that I guess implies he is sitting in front of an enormous Bengal tiger. Also of note, the finger of Strife's left hand here all tapered down in size from index to pinky. You know, as fingers do. There is also some crazy shit going on behind that binder in the general gauntlet forearm area. When I attempt to draw, I often fuck up a line and I'm like, oh shit, that's not how those parts of the body connect. And then I draw like two or three lines to cover it up because it just looks shitty. 
I can excuse it because one, I am usually just drawing in ballpoint on my binder or something, and two, I am not a professional artist. Rob Liefeld, by contrast, draws a gauntlet going into the forearm all fucked up in pencil. At that point, he just goes, fuck it, and then thinks over it and sends it to the colorist. Then he gets paid for doing that. Now we go on to 38. This is a cover of X-Force number 3 with Juggernaut and a whole bunch of different characters. It says, Among Us Walks the Juggernaut. So it says, You know what Rob Liefeld hates drawing? Feet. This is something that has been touched upon by a lot of people. That he does not enjoy drawing feet. So it says, On this cover for X-Force number 3, Rob is depicting a battle taking place between the titular team and internet darling the Juggernaut, who Among Us walks, apparently. They all appear to be battling atop some sort of boulder, which serves the purpose of covering up the feet of Juggernaut, Warpath, and Cable. Oh shit, gotta get Domino on there too, can't have an X-Force cover without tits. Shit, the ground I drew didn't reach over to where I'm putting her. Ah, fuck it, she'll be crouching. You can crouch in the air, right? Okay, so counting Cannibal, that's five characters' feet taken care of. That other Juggernaut foot, he can get away with because perspective, kinda. Ah, shit, gotta put Shatterstar on the cover. Nothing sells comic books in 1991 like a dude with, in a billowy silk shirt and some swords. Well, he's kind of, I don't know, either jumping in for some kind of Jody Fleisch seated dropkick or getting punched by Juggernaut. Check out his cape just coming straight out the back of his head. Liefeld picks that fucked up pose and everything seems to be going well, as far as Liefeld goes. Then he gets to the feet and sort of panics. Gah, I'll just draw an elongated Pac-Man and a kidney bean. Check out Spider-Man swinging in on a jungle vine. Jesus Christ, Liefeld drew a dog's hindquarters on him. Just straight up a dog's ass and legs. 37. Young Blood and Bloodshot on Deathmate Red. And it says, Young Blood, Deathshot, Deathmate, this blood's for you. Shit, who needs to explain why they're jumping together in front of a yellow wall with a spotlight on them? It's Death Blood Mate Shot. Rawr! Quick question. Why does Rob Liefeld think guns have two spots at the end of the barrel for bullets to come out? 36. We have just this drawing. <laughs> Without even having to read the description, I'm just laughing, looking at it. Boy, can old Rob design a costume. Let's see. Half jacket, turtleneck, matching dance troupe gloves, and oh yes, gigantic area. Apparently, the background artist for this panel was Harold, who was kind enough to lend his magic crayon to the scene. Hey, no feet in this one. Score! Oops, still managed to fuck up Deadpool's hand pretty bad, though. Oh well, I'm sure too many people will be unable to tear their eyes from that bulging gray package to give a shit. 35, we have <laughs> forearm. It says, I would be remiss if I did not mention one of Liefeld's more brilliant creations. Forearm! His power is that he has four arms! Do you realize a subtle pun that forearm... No, seriously, that's the dude's entire shtick. He's a strong guy who has four arms. No backstory, nothing remotely interesting about him. He would just show up and grin cockily and bear hug someone, and then Colossus or Warpath or someone would co cold cock him and whoop, there goes fo Forearm. Liefeld pretty much specialized in creating characters that no one could give half a fuck about, and then took that to new levels when he helped start Image, which was like an entire company dedicated to that principle. Keep in mind, that dude created a guy with four arms, and as evidenced in this panel, has no goddamn clue how to draw a guy with four arms. What do you mean, where is that arm coming from? Lay off me, asshole, I have to draw like 20 pages this month. 34, we have Domino and Cable in a, uh, in a tub together. Just go ahead and drink it in for a second, just the majesty of this. So it says, in this comic, X-Force leader Cable, worse than the previous leader, Network, and Domino, with the proportional strength and speed of PD from our gang, enjoy a steam bath. As we know from living on the planet Earth, water is varying shades of green, opaque, and gives off swirling plumes of smoke when heated. But some of those smoke plumes are coming from off screen, so maybe there are a bunch of humongous bathtubs in the room, or maybe someone is throwing decorative curtains. I've seen my share of X-Force covers. Domino is supposed to be about one-eighth the size of Cable. Maybe the top part of the bathtub is closer to us than the bottom, and we're looking at it from some weird six-fourths upside-down bird's-eye view. Domino is right, though. She's getting too old for these kinds of workouts. It's making her thighs look like fucked-up loaves of bread and stretch marks you could use to measure the height of your children. 
I think Rob started drawing the panel, realized he sucked at drawing water, but needed to keep drawing lines somewhere, so the people around him would think he was working hard on that water. LOL, but check out that sexy dialogue. 33, Cable and Deadpool, and I've seen this cover so many times, and every time I've seen it, I couldn't help but laugh. So it says, that gun is totally bending in the middle, right? It's not just me. What are those sticks that are coming out of Cable and Deadpool's rucksacks? Swords? Knives? Novelty cigars? Why does Cable have HAL 9000 on his back? Why is Cable six times bigger than Deadpool? Jesus Christ, look how big his left arm must be. A fun life drinking game. Take a shot for every pouch he draws on a character. Oh great, now you have alcohol poisoning. 32. Goddamn. In How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way, drawing comics in the style of Detective Comics, Detective Comics Comics, aping shit the Valiant Way, and every other drawing tutorial I've been a part of, it clearly says that every line you draw on a person's face adds to their age. When you're drawing children or sexy young women, you give them clean surfaces to suggest youth and a tightness of veins. And when you draw Clint Eastwood in an eye patch hanging out with Gen 13, you draw all over his face to let people know he's old. Depending on who you talk to, every line can equal a year added onto the life of your character. Shaft, the young leader of Rogue Operative Team Youngblood, is 900 years old, and he's looking through really fine blinds. Also, his head is on fire. Image Comics is about living for the moment and taking it to the extreme. They didn't have time to learn that when you stick your head in a shadow, it blocks the light on both your face and your hair. Doing research for the Lion King? Let Disney Comics go to fucking Africa and look at how lions work. Draw the lion from a point of view no man can see, and when the ink is still wet, run a comb over it. Isn't it funny that when asked to create a universe of characters for his own comic book line, Rob Liefeld draws a guy who looks exactly like Rob Liefeld and names him Shaft? 31. Goddamn. Look at this. Just drink it in yet again. Just drink in all of this and see if you can guess what's going to be made fun of. So says, you know what, even if this dude weren't Quadzilla, there's only, there's no way he'd be able to put his legs together with all those pouches and garters and whatever the fucks. Jesus, look how high up that one band around his leg is. What purpose could that possibly serve? His pants are so uncomfortably tight that his groin is, his groin is puckering into some sort of overachieving asterisk. His belt is just under his nipples. The real capper, though, is the knee pads. What the fuck must go through Liefeld's head when he's drawing a character? Yep, crew cut, I'll put Boba Fett's rocket on his back. Hmm. Oh, gotta go with the metal shoulder pads and enormous run DMC gold rope chain. Okay, belt, uh, pouches, 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 like things. Oh, knee pads, yes. In conclusion, I hate Rob Liefeld, and he should be thrown in a well.